everybody, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating a time-lapse sequence, time-lapse video. Uh, it's more than just shooting video on your camera and then speeding it up. Of course you can do it that way, but my preferred method has always been to do it sort of frame by frame, set up, you know, a, uh, an intervalometer connected to your camera. If you got some Canon cameras, you can install Magic Lantern, have a built-in intervalometer. A lot of Nikon cameras have built-in intervalometers. You can shoot each frame of your time lapse as a raw image, which is going to provide you with a massive image to work with that you can scale down to like a 1080p resolution, or you have room to sort of move the camera, if you will. Uh, and by the camera, I mean our, our sort of view in After Effects or Premiere Pro. We have the ability to move that around the scene and get a really detailed look at a specific part of your uh, your sequence or your video. So we're going to talk about taking a series of camera raw images that have been shot on a camera, convert them to video. It's going to begin in After Effects, and then we're going to export a video from Premiere Pro. Let me give you an example of uh, what we're going to be sort of working to get. So here I've got this clip. It's all still images, and we're just going through, and you know, it's a just a straight up time lapse image. We're shooting at like this this cinematic widescreen uh, to get this two three nine ratio effect. Uh, and then hey, BMW is still there in the end or at the end. Now, if you're interested in seeing kind of what this effect could lead to, you can check out a shot of time lapse film in summer of 2013. Boy, does that feel like a long time ago. Summer of 2013, Philly is Ugly is what it's called. You can check it out. I'll try to remember to throw a link down there in the, descri uh, in the description. And by the way, if you like this video as you're watching it, please give it a thumbs up. Always helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about how we can create this composition and create this, this camera raw sequence and essentially get a video out of it. So we're here in After Effects. I'm going to go Composition, New Composition. I want to create a new composition right out of the gate. I'm going to name the composition uh, Time Lapse, because why not? Width of 2580, height of 1080. Now, if you want to just standard 1080p, 1920 by 1080, great. 1440 is what, 2560 by 1440p, um, and so on and so forth. You can scale up as large or small as you want. I'm going 2580 by 1080p because it's that 239 ratio. Um, and I that that's that really that band widescreen kind of cool effect. I'm going 30 frames per second, which means every 30 photos, one second of footage. So that again, keep that in mind when you're shooting your photos. If you want 10 seconds of footage, you got to shoot 300 photos. Um, and then the duration of the uh, the composition is gonna be 30 seconds. We can shorten it or lengthen it once we've created it. So that's really no big deal. Hit OK, and you can see it's created this time lapse. Uh, this time lapse. Uh, composition. Um, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and talk about getting these camera raw images into uh, into After Effects. It's actually pretty simple. You just right click over here, choose import and import file. Now from my finder, I have uh, I have an entire hard drive that I used at the time I was shooting this time lapse project, and I actually have some clips from down in Washington D.C. They they obviously didn't make it into the Philadelphia project, um, but we're going to use them, play around with them. I'm going to go with my shot of the White House. So I'm going to open up this folder, and you can see I've got all these .cr2 files, numbered 1 through whatever, 300 or something. I don't even know how far it went. Um, but probably, I, was, I think I was shooting between like 250 and 300 photos per sequence that I was shooting at this particular time because I was still in that, that mode where I need to get a 10-second clip of each scene. All you need to do here is we're just importing a single file, not multiple files. I mean, After Effects will do the rest for us. So you just select that top file, White House underscore triple zero one. Choose Options and make sure you have checked on Camera Raw Sequence. After Effects will identify that this is a sequence of you know the same images. They're named the same. Uh, you know they've got that chronological numbering one through whatever two hundred or three hundred. And hit OK or not OK. Hit Open. And uh, what's going to happen is up will pop the Camera Raw dialog box. I've already done the editing I want to this. Um, by the way, check that out. You can see like the scopes that they have up on top of the uh, the White House, checking everybody out, making sure you're not up to any shady business. Uh, go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to import this. You can see over here on our project bin, we have this White House 001 through 0398.cr2. And in fact, if I check it out, I can see that the size of this file is 7.4 gigabytes, and it's because it's nearly 400 images, as we can see here from this sequence. Now that we have the sequence, we can grab it and drag it down here to our working area. You can see it's whatever, about 13 seconds, right? So we don't need the full 30 seconds of time we have. Um, I'm going to move back over to here. And you can see also, because we're shooting this camera raw image, the image is so much larger than that initial 2580 by 1080 uh, composition that we created. So if I like hit the letter S to scale this, um, you can see it brings up my scaling options. I need to zoom out a little bit more, maybe go to 33%. You can see just how much bigger our image is than the actual area that's going to be shown here in After Effects. So I can just scale this way down if I want, right? I can scale it all the way down like this. 
All right, that's kind of neat. It looks like it needs to be kind of tilted a little bit, maybe leveled out. It looks like it's on a little bit of a slant. Um, so let's go hit the letter R. It's going to bring up your rotation and maybe go like a negative 0.2. Let's try something like that. That looks pretty good. It might have taken it a touch too far, but I'm not going to be too, too picky. Um, in fact, I'm going to hit the letter S to go back to scale. I'm going to bring this up in size a touch more, uh, maybe something like that. All right, and now we're going to hit the letter P, which is going to bring up positioning. I have my X uh, coordinates here, so I could slide across the face of the White House. Uh, I'm going to try to make sure that's roughly centered. Uh, and I could also uh, toggle and mess around with the Y. So I think what the idea for this is going to be, not only is the time lapse going to be moving around, but I want the camera to appear like it's panning downward. So I'm going to begin high like this. Now I'm in my position options. I'm going to hit the little stopwatch. It's going to drop a keyframe at the beginning of my, uh, my sequence. That's where the playhead is. I'm going to drag the playhead all the way to about the end. Doesn't really matter if I get the exact last frame. I'm just going to get, you know, close enough. And then all I need to do is drag that Y adjustment down so I can, like, you know, see the, the fence and the fountain in front of the White House, maybe something like that. And After Effects is automatically going to place a keyframe at the end. What After Effects is doing is do, doing all the tweening in between these two keyframes and giving us a perfect fade down. Now, I would play it for you, but that would require me rendering the entire thing, so I don't want to go through that. But you can see the box moving for the image, which is, which is in fact indicating that, yeah, we've got some animation going on here. Now, a key factor for this animation, when you're doing animation on these time-lapse clips, you can do zooming, you can do subtle rotations, uh, you can do panning, zo uh, you know, lifting or lowering the camera, things like that. But the key I've found is very subtle movement. If you have something that's a quick movement, it becomes like a cheap 90s ad for used cars. It does not look very cinematic, does not look very good. So like slow, gradual, beautiful, controlled movement. Once you've done this, uh, what we're going to do is grab this, uh, this little selector down here. And we're going to drag it all the way back until it gets to the end of our sequence there. That's the part of this After Effects composition which we're going to export out or render out. So now that I have that selected, and by the way, it's not this top selector here. That's just kind of like your viewing area. Uh, it's this second, uh, this the second selector that you're concerned with. We're going to go File, Export, and choose to add it to the render queue. Now it's going to add it over here. Output module, uh, we can change it from lossless to whatever. I'm just going to go with like a regular QuickTime format um, and really not mess around with much of anything. Uh, it looks pretty much exactly like I want it. I'm really not being picky. Uh, and then Output to you can click time lapse. I'm going to save it to the desktop and I'll call this uh, White House, or, you know, render or whatever, too. And then I just simply hit save and then you hit the render button. Now, when I hit the render button, it's going to probably take, I don't know, 15 minutes for this 12 second clip to render out because it's a huge file. It's a lot of information we have going on. I'm not going to wait for it because I've already rendered this clip out kind of the way I want it. In fact, I've rendered a couple clips. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this render and we're going to jump over to Premiere Pro and talk about lining these clips up and making just a short video out of them. So here if we jump over to Premiere Pro, I can just go ahead and choose a new project and I can, I'll name it whatever I want, I'll just go time lapse test because uh, it's going to be a very temporary thing. Uh, location, let's just save it onto our desktop because why not? Uh, let's hit OK. And what we'll do here once Premiere opens up our, uh, our Premiere project is we'll go ahead and we'll just drag our media in. So I'm going to go back to my finder and I have this DC time lapse converted Jefferson Memorial converted, White House trimmed converted. These are my three MOV files that I want. I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop them right there in my project bin. They all appeared. So you can see we've got three different shots uh, from around Washington, D.C. And all I'll do, I'll begin with probably the daytime clip. It's actually kind of as the sun is setting. Uh, I'll just right click on it. I'm going to choose new sequence from clip. It's going to give me a new sequence that's sized just right. It has the right, uh, the right frame rate, everything that I need. Uh, and what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to hit this plus button to make sure I can see all of Premiere's UI. There we go. And you can see this is about a 20-something second clip. The good stuff is here at the end as the light really starts to change. You can see how much it really lights up the Jefferson Memorial. So maybe I'll go to right there and just uh, I'll grab the end of this clip, drag it over. And there we go. We've trimmed that down. So we have about 10 seconds of that. You probably don't want 10 seconds of much of any scene in your time-lapse clip, but we're going to be generous here. Uh, and then we'll drag the, the DC time-lapse night scene in. So you jump from that right to this night scene. There's a little jog at the beginning of the night scene here. You can see like the, the tripod gets bumped or something, so let's just move past that. And then I'll select the space in between, right click and choose ripple delete. It'll just back up the clip. Great. And then last but not least, the White House trimmed clip. So we go from DC at night by the park bench. Oh, there's that BMW frame. We probably want to trim that out of there. So let's just cut that out. Great. And we go right from the DC night scene to kind of this 
White House. We're panning down the face of the White House, just like that. So, I mean, it's super simple. You can add music to it. And obviously, if you add music, you probably want to line your cuts up about with where there's like cuts and bounces in the music, things like that. We'll go to the end of our uh, our little uh, clip here. Hit the letter O, set the out point of this video clip. Go back to the beginning, hit the, uh, hit the letter I to set the in point, and then just Command or Control M to go ahead and export this video. So now, uh, oh, by the way, the source range, you want to set it to sequence in out. That's why we set those in out points. You can see it's a 31 second video clip. We can scrub through it here and see, like here's what we've got going on. Great, 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 great. Uh, and then, you know, you can do whatever you want here in terms of uh, just match match the source and give it a high bit rate, which is going to ensure you have that 2580 by 1080. Um, you can play around with the different presets and change the width and height manually if you like. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. Um, but then you go ahead and hit the export button and you're going to get a video uh, at the end. Now, it's probably going to take a few minutes for this thing to export. But hey, why not go ahead and get the export started? So that's pretty much it. For creating a time-lapse sequence from raw images in After Effects and doing a little cinematic panning and shifting and whatever, uh, playing around with some of those settings in After Effects, bringing it into Premiere Pro, creating a video out of it, and some other small tips and tricks along the way. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.